Hej alla. Jag kommer från Stockholm, Sverige, men jag kommer att hålla den här presentationen på engelska. Hoppas det går bra. Så hi guys and girls. Happy to see a few girls in the room. Usually just guys. So I'm happy to be invited here, and I'm going to talk about a funny new paradigm changer, a bit of a game changer in 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 the world. It's called Funny by Me. We launched Funny by Me as a class classical crowdfunding site in March last year. And uh, classical crowdfunding is, the, is, is something called the reward-based crowdfunding. Basically, you say to your wall that I have an idea. It might be a hardware or a theater ticket or a CD or a company, but you say, I have an idea, and if you back me right now with a few dollars or a few crowns, I will in the near future give, it back, give something back to you. You will get the hardware piece or uh, something else. We launched Funny by Me in 2011 in Sweden because we uh, weren't invited to use the American platforms um, at that point and still yet. I think a lot of uh, non-American citizens can't use the American platforms. So we said, if they don't allow us, why not build it ourselves? And um, we started to prove our point because nobody believed in this. Nobody in Sweden thought that this could be a viable idea. Everybody thought, thought this is an Anglo-Saxic idea. This is not only working in America. So to prove the point, we actually crowdfunded our own crowdfunding site. So we went to our crowd and say, guys and girls and friends and family and strangers, we have a strange, mad idea. Help us. We will give something back to you. 100 crowns, you will get a hug. Uh, 150 crowns, you, you will get a t-shirt and a hug. And slowly we started to raise money. We raised 100,000 crowns, which is not a lot of money, but it's still a lot of money. And uh, my co-founder co Arno started coding. He coded in uh, 31 days, and then we put up something online, basically an embryo of what we have right now. And slowly, things started to happening. We got projects from day one. Uh, it took us over a year to make a presence, to raise the first million to, to crowdfunding projects. But a lot of things happened. And today, we're looking at this. This is our pivot, if I would say our change. We realized from day one that even if we take the entire Nordic region plus the Baltics, the market is too small for crowdfunding. We don't have that American 300 million people crowd. So we decided that we wanted to go into something called equity crowdfunding. So the principles of crowdfunding are quite simple, as I told you. You have an idea, you are probably hired as a consultant, in a company, or you are already doing stuff, but you need to test your idea on a market. And the thing is that why we see this happening, and why they, we see this as a success, success, is not because of people like us in this room have ideas and need money, or people like us in this room have money to spend on, on ideas. But what is happening right now in the world is that a paradigm shift is happening. Basically, social media changed our way of thinking. We got invited five and ten years ago to be part of stuff. Companies invited us to be participants. Companies invited us to, to give our, our opinions, to follow them, to, to join them. And slowly and steadily, everybody in the world will slowly become participants instead of end consumers or just customers. And this is quite interesting. This happens apparently in politics quite successfully. It happens in art, it happens in, in music, it happens in, in business. Um, we see, for instance, that the power of crowdfunding is not just about the fact that you have an idea, but it's the f about the fact that you go to the crowd and say, I want you to be part of my idea. I invite you to join me in my idea. And this is quite unusual because usually the crowd is not used to be invited. Usually they are invited a couple of weeks after you are done, when your, product, when your product is finished and you can't evolve anymore. Um, I don't have a lot of time, but I'm going to start by showing you an example of one of the best stories we have in our success rate uh, on Funded by Me. This is a project that ended exactly one year ago. They started a campaign in September 2011, and I want to give you a bit of a background story. I was contacted by this guy called Yoon. And he was a consultant at a consultancy agency. He was a passionate hamburger lover. He loved hamburgers. So he had a blog about hamburgers, and he said, wow, wonder if I would open my own hamburger joint in Stockholm. Or really, there's a hole in the wall. 
but a really good hamburger joint. Not shitty McDonald's, not high-end Kobe beef burgers for $100, but something pure and genuine. So he went to the bank and the bank said, no, of course not, we, we will not give you, give you the loan because the market is overcrowded by hamburger joints. He went to the Swedish government to ask for grants that uh, as entrepreneurs uh, are getting, and they said, you're a consultant, you're not a chef. The success rate of this project is probably zero, so we will not allow you. But uh, Jun came to us, um, and we went to the crowd. And Jun had a really simple idea. He said, I want to open a hamburger joint, I want to see if my crowd, if the crowd is ready, if the crowd wants this. And as I told you before, he might have needed a million crowns to open his restaurant. But he did a really small campaign, as you see, 36,000 crowns he raised, which is just symbolic. But the thing is, what happened with those, th those, th that money is that a lot of people started tweeting about this, a lot of people started talking about this, a lot of people started Facebooking and telling their friends. People were bragging, saying, I just bought a really expensive burger, which doesn't exist, in a place that doesn't exist. So people got interested about this phenomenon. And in 182 days from the start of his campaign, Yoon opened one of the most hyped restaurants in Stockholm. And he got um, massive reviews in the, in, in, in the papers. He's on TV right now. Investors are flying to him to invest in his restaurant. He has cookbooks that people want him to write. And the thing is that he could have probably done this alone. But with the help of the crowd, he could do it really fast. And the thing is that when he did his campaign, in, in September, he said, I will be done in November. Of course he wasn't done in November. So what he did, he went back to the crowd and said, guys and girls, I have problems with the fans, with the authorizations, with the, uh, my restaurant, I don't know where I should put it, I don't know, uh, etc." The crowd came back with options and ideas, and suddenly when he opened in March, people went there with their friends and their friends and their friends and stood in line to, to come in. And this is today. I went there to this place just the other day, and it's still at least one hour line to get into this restaurant. Jun has something that in Sweden we call Elan's problem. He has too much business. He can't cope almost. He, have to, he has to hire too much people. And this is really fantastic, because the thing is that a lot of people, when we do stuff, when we build sites, when we build apps, when we build ideas, what we do is that we build it alone. We sit in a room with a bit of a help from some angel or some government aid or our... Uh, uh, checking account or some kind of a will that we inherited and we put something on, 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 on the market without knowing that does the market want it. And his, in, the, in this case he could prove that uh, the crowd wanted it. But on the other hand, you have to see the reality of this one. Because the thing is that if, if his campaign wouldn't have been viral as it was, if, if it wouldn't have been as successful as it become, he wouldn't have quit his job. He wouldn't have hired people. He wouldn't have taken a million crown loan for his restaurant. So it's quite interesting. But on the other hand, if you see me as a backer of his project, what do I get? I gave him 150 crowns. And I got the opportunity to get one free burger when I purchased a burger in the future. So I did a double sale. He did a double sale, basically. But here's a tragedy. Because in crowdfunding, you have a huge problem. The problem is that when you actually get your reward, your love stops. You fell in love once with this entrepreneur, with this um, project owner. You fell in love with his idea. And when you get the project in the mail, you can't be involved anymore. So we realized that ownership is far more interesting. One, because it's not everybody can um, productify an idea. Not everybody can say, give me 100 crowns or $100 and I will give something back to you. Uh, the next speaker will, will be give you a perfect example of this, how a brilliant product can become viral. But not everybody has a viral product or a product that can become a product. Some, some people have an app company, for instance, and those are a bit hard to say, I will give you a, an app or a part of an app. But so we realized that cro equity crowdfunding is the next big thing. Um, equity crowdfunding is quite simple, basically. You put your idea on Fund by Me or a similar site. There are a few ones. And you say, I want to test the market on this evaluation, on this presentation. What, is my, what, 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 what reaction am I getting back? Uh, and it's really interesting. The thing is that we, we opened this in March, no, sorry, in September 2012. We launched equity crowdfunding. We spent almost a half a year on, 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 on testing the market, testing the legal issues, testing the, um, how the method should work. 
and from day one in September 1 this year, everything exploded on our, our behalf. We got investors, we got companies wanting to join us. And we got people, I know if you saw on my first slide, I'm going to go back so we can see it. We asked our crowd a simple question, which is, if the proper company would come, or the good idea, or something that would you, you would like, what would you invest? Some people say zero, because they don't dare to invest. Others say 100 crowns, others say thousands. And this is right now our accumulated number in um, 70 days. And it's, it's a bit massive, it's a bit scary. It's, it's so big that it's so scary. The thing is that this is real money that people say, I want to invest if the proper thing is coming. For me, my big job is to turn this into actual investments. So we opened this in September, we opened with something that we call the pre-round, um, which is basically a method of testing your ca capacity to present your idea, you, your evaluation, your um, presentation, and your team presentation. So what happens in a pre-round? When you are in pre-round, you have a simple presentation, which you basically try to convince people that they should fall in love with you, they should follow you. And then you un un underbase that with facts, a business plan, an investment memorandum, etc. And people start to join you. They either say that I want to follow this company, or they say I want to join this company, or I want to work for this company, or at this company. Or they say I want to invest. And then when they say that I want to invest, they get asked how much would you invest. So the good thing is that the entrepreneur, in his back end, in his administration panel, he sees how the reactions are. He sees how, many, how much money he might raise. So when he actually opens the round, it's a really, 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 really good round. It's an educated guess, basically making him or her almost succeed. The success rate is infinite when you actually open the round. We actually don't want people to open rounds. We want people to open smart rounds. So that's why we hope to have thousands of companies in pre-round where they present better, they meet people, they have coffees, and then when they're ready, they open the actual round and invite people. And also, on the other hand, uh, me as an investor, when I was starting Fund me, if somebody would have <coughs> given me money, I would have almost gladly accepted it, because money is key. But the thing is, with Fund me equity right now, and since you get so much interest in the back end, you can start doing your own due diligence on your investors, and you can start choosing. You can say, two minutes left? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, you can say, I want this guy or this girl, I can, this, this person is going to be on the waiting list, etc. Um, this company is the one who is trending right now the most in Sweden. They opened the pre-round in September 1, a totally unknown Swedish vodka brand. And you know, vodka is vodka, Everything, every vodka is vodka, so it's uh, all about packaging, hype, PR. These guys evaluated a strange idea, without a product almost, at 10 million crowns, which is a lot of money for uh, an idea. But the thing is that they said we can probably raise a million for 10% from business angels, traditional business angels, but we don't want that. We actually do want to go <laughs> to more people. We want to open up for people who will enter with 1,000 crowns or 15,000 or 50,000 because they want a lot of people to being part of their virtuous vodka story. And, <coughs> sorry, they opened around, um, I think it's like 15 days ago or something, and they already raised 390,000 crowns, which is a lot of money. And I'm totally sure that this, this company will be probably our first success story because they will raise the first million, and they will show other people that it's doable. Of course, at this point, we are a new company in the equity uh, business. We are establishing ourselves really fast. We have raised a lot of capital on ourselves and building a team. So I'm really happy to be here because I wanted to tell you this, because we actually are expanding quite fast, and Norway will be one of those markets we want to go into. Um, because I think we have something really, really good. And I think we have something really good for you guys to create your stuff. But I think the most important people and the, the ones who we actually see as our customers in one, two, three, four, five years from now is not we people who need money to do our ideas. <laughs> and it's not we who have money to put in projects to uh, uh, with ideas. It's actually the man and the woman on the street to each, you know, I have this crazy idea, somebody's driving a truck, and he's like, oh, I like ice cream, wonder if I can invest in an ice cream company. 
and you go to fund them. I mean, you invest 10,000 in an ice cream company. And then it's like, oh, I love, uh, I love uh, this children's app. wonder if there's a children's app they can invest in. So that's my dream. And uh, it's growing, it's going really fast, and I'm, I'm really happy to be here to tell you about this. And this is actually uh, our strate strategic plan <laughs> at this point, uh, which I wanted you to show you guys. Um, thank you. My time is up. <laughs>